And now, another episode of Locker Room TV. Holy smokes, we got a special guest. <laughs> John Angus from The Trues. How you doing, my friend? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good. We should start with, um, how's the last couple of years been for you? A little slow. A little slow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's the first time in our band's history when the brakes have been slammed and everything had to stop indefinitely. That's never happened to us. We always thought as musicians, we were certainly recession proof. You know, we're kind of like alcohol. People do it when they're sad and they do it when they're happy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but that, you know, we're not pandemic proof. It turns out our whole business relies on large groups of people standing shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so we were told to go sit in the corner and wait it out. And that was yeah. very bizarre. I mean, I won't lie. It was like two weeks of, I guess, a bit relaxing, although a bit worrisome, but just like, wow, the schedule is clear. Uh, but that got old pretty quick. And um, then we just started fishing around for ways to stay busy and, you know, getting caught up with our tech like we're doing right now, you know, and, and uh, you know, just all the rest of it. Wrote a lot of songs, made a record, did some weird live stuff you know drive-ins and yeah. social distance, this and that did a lot of live streaming but you know it's it's really nice to be crawling out the other end of that particular briar and, and getting back on the bus and, and heading out and playing show after show after show i mean can't tell you how much we're looking forward to it yeah and the trues are going to be here may 30th at midway it's a fairly new venue um like they've played done shows there before but it's oh, a new idea that's the one just up here that's where we saw the who the who and yeah. uh, Mar H -U. marcus yeah. king just played there on the weekend okay. Yeah, you, had there upset. There. you missed him. Had Marcus King was here. We didn't even know. <laughs> do, do you know that band, John Angus? Do you know uh, uh, Marcus King? Yeah, I do know him. Yeah, I know his music. Yeah, yeah. He was in town. We're, Grant and I are big fans. Yeah. And, and literally, he, he said this morning, he goes, it was in, we, we're not paying attention like we used to, right? We're still sort of in that mode. We're crawling out of the other end of it as well, for sure. Did you watch more Netflix than practice? Be honest, John Angus. Uh, probably. I mean, at first, <laughs> you know, I was like everybody else, you know, I saw my Tiger King and, and all the rest of it. But uh, <laughs> I eventually had like a bit of a health thing happen in the summer of 2020. I ended up having to have a surgery on my spine that was in an emergency. And it wasn't Just until then that I actually started practicing because I was on my ass for a couple of months i had to like walk with a cane and i couldn't get around too easily so to be honest i i kind of lost my passion for it for like the first bunch of months it's just without the target like all our studio dates got blown out all our shows got blown out without that particular target on the horizon i just found it hard to stay motivated so i, I watched a bunch of netflix and all the rest of that stuff and then yeah. once i got hurt I, I sort of like picked up the guitar and i started playing like out an hour or two a day again and that sort of helped me get back into the flow and, and write and everything else you got little ones at home too, right? I got two little ones. Yeah, they were two and uh, six when we came into this, and now they're four and eight. Um, and that was yeah, that was interesting. You know, no no school for the most part. Um, the house became the school, and you know, you guys have kids, right? Or some of you? I mean, you know, uh, mine are somewhat older. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine are out of the house, but yeah, yeah, kind of. So, yeah, kind. I'm still paying. They show up every once in a while. John Angus, you always end up paying for them. Just get used to it. Okay. You're going to be on the road forever. Yeah. <laughs> After um, what I just lived through, that's not the worst news, to be honest. Yeah. I have a question about the state of the music industry, and not that we need to get into the weeds on this, but based on what we went through and sort of the ups and downs of the business before we got into it, do you think, do you think there's going to be more changes coming? Uh, you, the live end of it or the recorded end of it? They're pretty different businesses. Yeah, um, um, I, I think I'm focusing more on the recording side of it because I, I, I noticed you guys with this record that's that's out now and the, the new single's Enemy, go watch the video and get the record, download it, do whatever the hell you do to, to hear your music, go hear this record you guys are still doing a traditional sort of approach to releasing music, which I find refreshing. Well, we're still doing album cycles. And I think that's because we're sort of stuck in our ways. And we grew up with bands coming out with an album every year and a half or two years, and then going out and touring it. We have been like flirting with um, 
just dropping things like dropping singles. Like at the beginning of the pandemic, we dropped a single called Godspeed Rebel the same month we went into lockdown because it was just sitting in the can and we just wanted, we knew our audience was literally captive. So we just like dropped a single and they loved it. And, but it hadn't, it had no, it didn't end up on the record. And then we dropped a cover by the who not to be confused with that other band. You not just with mentioned. the HU. <laughs> yeah. No, we just, we dropped a who cover called 1921 because it had the chorus line. I got a feeling 21 is going to be a good year. So we, we covered that song at the end of 2020 and dropped it as a standalone track. Uh, so yeah, we, we're trying to flirt with this new like constant flow of information age that we're sort of in now uh, that I think, you know, certainly like, uh, you know, hip hop artists and pop artists, they don't adhere to any real album cycles anymore. It's just like a constant steady flow of, of mm -hmm. output. But, but every couple of years, I do like putting a record out, like a collection of, of 12 or in this case, 14 songs that just sort of speak to the, you know, moment that we're in and the time we just went through and then you can collect it and it can be, you know, so it may be a little old fashioned, but our fans still appreciate it. We still like doing it that way. Um, whether, yeah. I mean, you know, that I, I don't think it'll fully ever go away, but it's certainly like drifting away from that. We're, we're going to go back to more like a singles universe, kind of where rock and roll started in the fifties and sixties, where I agree. One, or two, one or two songs comes out every three or four months. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Locke mentioned the music video. Um, he mentioned that because he's very jealous of, Everybody in the band's ability to wear cool hats. I know. It just pisses me <laughs> off. You yeah, got one on today, too. Yeah, like everybody in the video has a hat on, and they all look cool. And I'm like, I put a hat on, I look like a dick <laughs> every time. Have you explored every option? I mean, certainly you're Canadian. You can't look that bad in the toque. <laughs> no, I don't even look good in the toque. No, he doesn't. I swear. He is I, a horrible lid. I don't know what it is. It's like a like it's a natural childbirth melon, right? Like it's just it's a weird thing, and I and I don't carry myself well. Like I'm I'm like kind of awkward. I'm all limbs, right? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You can't be yeah. too self aware of the hat in order to pull off the hat. I guess is maybe is that thing. what it is. You just got to put it on and be confident. I can you do. Gotta it forget. That's about it. But yeah, I just. I wish I, I could do the that. hat. Jimmy looks good in any hat. We put anything yeah. on him. Um, and look at all that hair. You don't, you don't need to wear a hat. Look at all his, that hair. No. His current style is Joe Exotic. Yeah. That was what inspired him. We were talking about that earlier, yeah. oddly enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, he, I think it was because of all the years he wore a helmet. <laughs> I didn't wear a helmet as much as you guys <laughs> think I did. <laughs> um, you guys took a promo pick. I got a press pack from your record company. And uh, there was a really cool picture of you guys. And I don't even know why I'm asking this because no one probably gives two flying shits about it. But there was a really cool picture of you guys in front of a barn or a church yeah, or yeah. some. Where, where was that, John? That's, do you know, have you, have you heard of like the Way Home Festival or the Boots and Hearts Festival? Or there's, there's a, a, fe a festival site um, north of Toronto in a town called Oromodonte. I can't remember what the grounds are called at the moment, but we played them last summer. Like basically the, it's a festival site that could fit a hundred thousand people. Like the stones have played there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They've had massive festivals up there. Anyway, they put, they put on again, one of those weird social distance things. We, we played there, but we played there for like 5,000 people in a place that holds a hundred thousand and they wow. all like sequestered off into like their own little uh, quarters. You know, it was one of those weird, you know, COVID shows, but we, we got their own <laughs> festival site. And that barn was like the sort of dressing room area for, uh, oh, it's called Burl's Creek. That's what it's called, Burl's Creek. So that's where we took that photo. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really good imagery. I, I was actually I, really struck by the by the background of that pic. Yeah, it looks like an album cover, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. odd, too. It looks like a Who. You, you mentioned you did the the Who cover. It looks like a Who album cover. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's a great shot. Um, Matt Perry took it. Good, good friend of ours. It's, yeah, it's, it's a nice one. And when are you guys in Edmonton again? The 30th of May, I think. I should probably get that right since we're on the radio, right? Um, <laughs> it's either the 30th or the 31st. I think it's the 30th. Yeah, yeah I'm just the looking now. The 30th at Midway. Yeah. You guys are touring with Black Crows a bit, John Agus? Yeah, we have a couple shows with the Crows in Ontario in July. Um, Rich Robinson did three songs on Wanderer, our latest record. He did. He, we actually started the, the process in Nashville in late 2019, went down and, and recorded with Rich. I, I was, when they put the Crows back together, Rich had very, I mean, he's an old pal and he had very generously invited me down to sort of jam and see if it's a shoe fit kind of thing. Um, and that was back in September of 2019. So I got to play in the Black Crows for a few hours, which was great. 
Wow. And then two months later, that sort of planted the seed of let's do something together. And two months later, I, we drove down to Nashville in December. We did three songs, which were Permission and Faith and Fumes and Hidden Gem. And that was the beginning of the record. And then we came back to Canada for this short little tour in the first quarter of uh, 2020. So Rich, Rich is on those first three songs? Yeah, he produced them okay, and cool. he played, played some guitar on them. Um, and then we, yeah, of course, we all know what happens next. Like the border closes. We Our label loved it. We were going to go do another six at the end of March and early April. And then I, we were hoping to have the album done by May and out by the summer. And everything just went to, went to shit. And then we had to pivot and do new things. But, you know, obviously very close with Rich and, and the guys in the Crows. And we're very honored to get the offer to do some, some of their dates this summer. Very cool. Well, listen, um, don't be a stranger. If you guys are in town, hit us up and come down. And, yeah. Well, I, you know what? We don't get we don't get the live performances from bands on the morning radio. <laughs> uh, you can pre-record if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last thing any of them want to do. You want to come down at eight o'clock in the morning? No, yeah. no, you can, you can go pound sand. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Only if we're still up, not if we're uh, <laughs> not if we've already gone to bed. All right, uh, John Angus. The name of the new record is. It's called Wanderer. Okay, and that new single is called Enemy. Make sure you Enemy, go find yeah. it. Yeah, go Are grab you that. Play, you still playing the harp, Lock? I still play the face piano. Yeah, yeah. Right. Every once in a while, I'll drag my Raven uh, out, and, uh, and I'll make a bunch of noise. I'll squawk in the in the basement. I haven't played live in a while. Since you got kicked off stage with the red cannons, I believe. Yeah. I, I did right, get... Right before COVID. I did get asked <laughs> right. to leave... <laughs> I may have been too drunk to be up there, that, which has happened before. Oh, we've all been there. We've all yeah. been there. Yeah, yeah. Weird that the, the harmonica is the drunkest one on stage. Eh? Yeah. The guy with not a real <laughs> instrument. <laughs> all one. right, John. Thank you for your time, my friend. Yeah, all right. Say hi to the boys for us, all right? We'll do. Cheers, everyone. The Locker Room, weekday mornings on 95.7 Cruise FM.